Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So we are going to continue our Nextcloud tutorials. And uh, this time we're going to go through the admin section, set up a few users, install some apps, and uh, just kind of do a few other odds and ends uh, throughout the system. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go through and just pull up the, uh, the, the account that we've already created. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and start working on um, first of all, making sure that the site always loads in HTTPS rather than just however they load it. And then what we're going to do is we want to make sure that, um, uh, that we have our users and, and all that kind of stuff in place. Uh, there's a few other little things I'll show you that I think might be bugs just to based upon the things that I've looked at. But we're going to go ahead and, uh, and just proceed with that and see, see what happens. Okay, so here we are logged into the system, and you'll see here that now I have it set as HTTPS. The problem is, is that the way this installs on a cPanel, it doesn't ever guarantee that. So you'll see that I can actually get to it without HTTPS. So what we want to do is we actually want to make an amendment to the htaccess file. Um, so for whatever reason, um, uh, for whatever reason, the uh, the cPanel access does not force this and doesn't have an ac a, a, uh, access to it. So what I did is I went back into my file manager and you might need to go up into settings and make sure that show hidden files is set up. And then what we're going to do is I want to uh, view this guy or I, I want to edit it actually. I'm going to go ahead and edit the HT access. You might want to um, you might want to download a copy of it in case you mess something up. Um, but what we're going to do is I have this part over here, which is all this does is it's a HT access script that's going to redirect all traffic to HTTPS. And we're just going to come down here and we are going to add it to the bottom down here. So I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and I'm just going to go ahead and do that and hit save changes. And now anytime I go to anything in Nextcloud, it should force it to go on to HTTPS. Now you do need to make sure you have a valid SSL installed. So you, what you want to do if you're buying a cPanel for this type of access, make sure that you have one that supports Let's Encrypt SSL or at least the cPanel Komodo free SSL. So you're not paying a ton of extra money for this kind of stuff. Um, but now you'll see that once we've added that to our HT access file, it's always going to be redirecting to the HTTPS version of the site, which is which is good. So now we can see we're in here and we just have our basic functionality, our files, our activity feed, which I actually find a little uh, annoying. We have our gallery. And then um, what we want to do here is the first thing is we can go ahead and create groups and we can create... Um, individual uh, individual users. So we have our personal. First, let's go through the personal. This would apply to a user as well as the administrator. So you can enter your administrator here, your emails over here. This will send password reset and notifications to this email. You can enter any other information you want here, including a profile picture. So, you know, I could actually come up here and maybe I'll just use here, I'll use the squirrel for my profile picture just to show you how to do that. So here you can crop it down. So there we go. Switch to Linux as a squirrely kind of guy. Um, and then what you can do is over here, you can change your passwords so that anybody over here can actually get in here and, and change their passwords. And then here we have a variety of, uh, uh, you know, the various links again to download the options that you have. Um, Here's your security items, just kind of tell you what's going on. These are the activities you can get. I usually turn most of these things off. Um, system tags for file, comments for files, calendar to do event was modified. I generally don't want much of this. Um, I might want to get this if something is made public, is shared. I might want to do that. Um, let's see, it's been shared, a file or folder has been shared, a file or folder shared from another server. So I just kind of want to customize these. You set these however you want these uh, to be set. I don't want like to get annoyed by activity feeds or things like that, so I turn most of those off. Um, uh, Federation Cloud, uh, Federated Clouds is a system that allows you to share between other Nextcloud users. Um, so we have, you know, options with Nextcloud and Facebook, Twitter, Google, Disproval, whatever. 
Uh, so that's kind of what you can do. You what you can do there. Um, other items, the admin has this admin panel. So the admin panel controls a lot of your different settings. Some of your apps will appear over here. You'll see here that we'll have um, some security warnings. This guy here is, it's basically telling us we might want to enable HSTS. Um, and another one basically says there's a file here that is not in the list. And I actually went and looked for this invalid file and I can't find it. So for now, I'm going to ignore these. We might want to dig into this a little bit, uh, a little bit more, just to uh, just to make sure that that we're we are hardening everything down. Uh, but everything else, it'll you'll see it's uh, it's going to give us the options. So, what do you want to be able to do? Background jobs. Um, what's our version? And we can actually go into an update or you know stable update production. We're just going to leave that where that is for now. Your monitoring will look at how many active users, your shares, uh, various memory items that we have. The sharing will enable you to determine where things are shared. You can turn on or turn off public uploaded files, turn on or turn off password protection. You can allow or restrict various groups from using things. And then there's trusted servers where you can actually um, set things up. So there's share by email stuff, uh, security. theming, you can adjust the colors. There's probably ways to make more themes for these. I'm not going to get into any of that. Uh, you can change your basic color to something else if you want to. You can up update your own logo if you want to. Um, log an image if you want, if you want to. I'm going to leave those uh, undone for now. Um, let's see. Encryption by default. Let's see. Enable server side encryption. Makes it possible to encrypt files that are uploaded to the server. Comes with limitations like performance penalty. So we can um, enable this if we want to. It is disabled by default. I can't remember if I encrypted everything on my production or not. I, I can't remember for sure. Uh, again, here's your activity feed. So this is your global activity feed. So anytime you create a new user, what do you want their activity feeds to do? And so you might want to set this however you want your uh, your own settings to go. I'm just going to go ahead for the purpose of this, turn everything off. Usage survey. Here's logging. Do you want things to create logs for you? If you're in the middle of having some challenges, you might want to go ahead and, and do that. Um, some other additional settings, how you can, how you send emails and things, and there's the tips and tricks down here at the bottom. All right, so the next thing we're going to skip apps for now. We're going to go over to users. So with your users, you can see that we have the the user here. You can create a new user. Maybe I'll create uh, Tom with a password of Tom STL, and then um, you can go ahead and do that. It, you do require a password to create a new user. Oh, it needs to be at least eight characters long. One, one. All right. So there we are. You can set the password lengths and things. So now what I can do over here is if I create a new username, I can add it to specific groups if I want to over here. I think that's what it is. Let's just add Bob, not boob, Bob. Bob STL one one. Whoop, I did one one one. What I'd like to do though is not assign him to any group. So let's do that. So now Bob will not be assigned to any group over here. I have Tom added to this. Over here, I can put the admin into any group. So what groups will allow you to do is allow you know collaboration across different projects. So if I got four or five different people on different things, I can assign different people to different groups so they can actually get back and forth. We can set quota limits. You might want to do that, particularly if, if you have a, a shared server with your where you're gapped in your size, you might gap you know, say people's sizes out. I'm going to set it one because I think my default accounts here have limits of of like, uh, you know, five gigs or something. So each each guy over there is going to have that. So there you can set the working groups. I, I forgot that's how you have to add the groups to that. So here I can add that to the working group as well. So that's how you add your, uh, your various users. You'll see here that we have um, a couple working group people. Let me refresh the page again, see if that goes down. There we go, our working group. Um, there's two people. Oh, he didn't get saved. There we go. Now working group is in three. 
Um, we have one admin. We have three everyones here. Okay, there you go. There's where you can add a different group. I forgot about that one. My apologies for that. Um, now we'll look at the apps. So the apps are where Nextcloud really starts to stand out because there's so many cool things that you can do. So you can come down here. We have enabled apps, disabled apps, app bundles. We're going to actually just kind of go through these guys here, going through these groups down here just to see what the various options are. So app order, um, I'm guessing that this will allow you to change the order of things. I don't know for sure. I've never tried using that one. I don't know. Um, external sites, custom CSS, if you want to customize things. There you go. There's the LSD trip. It will um, kind of make you crazy as it cycles through the whole color wheel. Obviously, I don't know what all of these apps do. So um, you, what you want to do is come in here and look through the various apps and see. You can see a lot of these are enabled already. Uh, some of them are enabled, not all of them. Um, Files, automatic tagging, file access control to control who has, you know, sees various files, SharePoint, group folders. Uh, group folders, I think, is nice. I enabled that on mine because it allows me to drop files inside of folders or sync into group folders so that everybody's folders are going to go back and forth. Uh, check some. That's nice if you're working with files. You want to double check the um, uh double-checking the integrity of files. So only Office, we're going to do things like only Office and uh, um, LibreOffice at a different different place. Here's an ebook reader. There's no games installed in here yet. Integration. Um, so Calibora Online is what allows you to uh, to basically run um, LibreOffice Online. This one is quite a bit complicated, so there will be a couple videos on that. Uh, let's see, GitHub Merge Tracker, uh, here's your only office, Zebra Drive, Admin Notifications, Activities for Shared Downloads. Okay, Multimedia, depending on the type of, uh, type of system you're working with, uh, the talk allows video conferencing, so that's pretty cool, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, audio Player allows you to stream music directly from your system. Here's uh, GPS tracking information. Um, our music will allow you to do some of those. Your phone sync will actually give you the ability to uh, sync your SMS with your cloud. News feeds. Let's see what this one is. I'm going to check out what that one is. All right, um, Office and Texts, our calendar. You, so this will allow you to merge calendars with your online systems. Um, there's your documents. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe that the documents is... Okay, so this one is not maintained. And if you're running the uh, uh, Collabora Online, I hear that your documents will interfere with it. Since I have Collabora Online working on my production system, then um, I don't. Uh, I have disabled the documents because I don't want that to happen. Deck basically is kind of like a Trello board, I believe. It enables you to, you know, assign different tasks to different people. Mail is nice. We're gonna go ahead and install that one. Um, notes is nice. Tasks again, you can, you know, give people different tasks. All right, security, brute force settings. We can disable brute force, uh, two-factor authentication. So this is something that you might want if you're, uh, you know, if you're extra worried about security, enable that guy. And it sits under social. We have that. We have that set up. There's circles, social sharing via email or dysphoria. There's Facebook, Google, Twitter. All sorts of other things. So there are a lot of different apps. You can see as I've added these various apps, you'll see that uh, different things got put in here. So the video calls will just start the video conferencing system. Your mail is nice because you can come down here and you can add uh, a variety of uh, a variety of different things. You can actually enable your notifications in there uh, as well, so it'll check in the background. 
So you can come down here and hit your mail configuration. I believe you only have IMAP option here, which actually would make sense uh, for this type of application. You can add multiple different emails in here. Uh, we'll do a separate video on setting up emails perhaps. It's, this is pretty standard stuff. Enter your, your name, your email address, and your server settings, and it actually works perfectly fine. So. Uh, we're not going to worry about uh, worry about that. Your audio player, um, this is actually going to scan for any artists or anything that you have. Uh, I do not believe I have anything, so I'm clicking this guy there. It's actually going to start scanning everything that we have. You'll see here that it didn't actually find any files, so uh, sad, sad, I guess. Let's see if I have some classical on here. I can probably upload some classical without a problem. So we're going to go back to our documents over here. And what I might do actually is just come up here and create a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder music. Okay, so here into music, I'm going to upload a file. And I'm pretty sure I probably have some classical or something on here, maybe. Uh, there you go. I have the 1812 overture. I don't want the full thing. Let's just upload something, something simple. There we go. That's nice and nice and small. Okay, so now I have this, this in here. Let's head on back to our music app now. Okay, so now it sees it. I can click the play and it should start playing that. Okay. Now I also have the audio player over here. These are two different things. Um, again, what we, need to do, what we need to do is just click on the artists, hit the refresh, start a scan it will now find audio files and based upon the tag oh, that should be showing up some of these I find you have to refresh to actually get things to show up that should have imported that oh, okay there it is so now click on the file down there and so now I can actually run this and so you can put your music up here in the cloud if you're on a basic uh, a basic system then you can actually go ahead and um, start streaming from this so that is a neat functionality let's see we talked about that we talked about that and here is the activity cloud there's no activity because I turned most of it off so if I want to actually share that file with somebody so maybe I wanted somebody to have access to that music file I just uploaded you can grab this here's your share function over here and then you can actually do um, a share link will basically make a public sharing. You can set an, a password protection or, um, or a uh, expiration date. Of course, you can allow editing if it's an editable item. Uh, but the other thing, though, is that with sharing, you can come down here and just type in the name of somebody you'd like to share it with. It'll appear in the list. And now you'll see that that is shared. So I can come down here again, clicking on the shared, and you'll see where it's at and I can actually revoke the sharing. I can change the editing over here. So here's how I unshare the document. So now you'll see that it's no longer shared. So that is your basic setup. Um, in, uh, we covered the installation last time. This is a basic setup, getting everything ready. So now anybody can get in here and jump back and forth and do some things. So we'll do some, um, we'll do some uh, more work with Calibora. Uh, or Calabra, however that's pronounced. Uh, we'll talk about some of the some of the issues with that. And uh, what else we'll do is we'll talk about how you can still use this with like LibreOffice uh, in an online system. We'll go, go ahead and talk about how to do that. So thanks for watching this video. If you would like to help support what we're doing, check out switchlinks.com forward slash support, and then you can learn how to how to support this channel. You can also check in the links in the description below. On Patreon, on patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there are some Amazon links in the description. So thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.